I want to make a game. Thing is, I've no idea what game I want to make. I'm not even pretending to be a games designer. I'm a software engineer. I'm that guy who pokes at the innards of the machine to work out how it functions. I'm good at making tools, not using them. Now, this is not my first go at this. I have been here before. This is not a new path that I'm going down. Back in the early 2000s, I made a slightly passable attempt at porting Chucky Egg to the Game Boy Advance using third-party development tools, a flash cartridge designed for running pirate software, and a lot of half-assed, poorly written documentation. I was also one of the six people who owned an Ouya, if you remember what that thing was, and I managed to create two not entirely terrible games for that short-lived platform. The one game a month challenge was something I took part in during 2014. 12 hastily mashed together games were created using a programming language called Hacks Flixel that I bet you've never heard of. So this is not the usual game development series where someone aspires to complete their first game. Instead, getting better at the process of making games is my aim. That means making several games, trying out ideas and throwing away the ones that don't work. Not giving in to sunken cost fallacy of continuing an idea that is fundamentally crap. I want to get slick at starting a project to test out ideas. I want to be able to go from a random idea in my head to something playable in an afternoon. Oh, did I mention I also want to make this for the Spectrum next? A system I'm still trying to get to grips with. Remember, I used to own an Ouya and make games for the Game Boy Advance using a hacked together dev kit. My definition of fun is probably not the same as yours. If it is, subscribe. We're off on a mad journey and I have no idea where we'll end up. So what game do I want to make? I have no idea. Not a clue. I told you, I'm crap at designing things. Sure, I could copy an existing game, but then why bother playing my copy of the original? This is why I want to quickly iterate through the process of making games. Many short projects, not one mega project, I'm going to set the bar initially so low I can't fail, even if I knock it over. I'm aiming at the kind of games that used to appear on 8 and 16-bit cover discs and tapes, the ones sent in by readers. A bit rough, not very large, often quite weird. While I've no clue what to make, I have been doing some research. I'm not going into this completely blind. I had to think about what games I enjoy playing, and after throwing out anything 3D or multiplayer, I was left with games I remember playing as a kid. A kid who owned an Acorn Electron, a ZX Spectrum, an Atari ST, and then a DOS PC during the 80s and the 90s. More specifically, a British kid who was exposed to the bizarre games from an industry that didn't yet realise it was even an industry. When I was a kid, rather than one trapped in an adult's body, the games I liked the most had some element of exploration to them. And being in the olden times, all games are 2D platformers. So a 2D platformer it is. You can't go wrong with a 2D platformer. I was never that excited by platformers like Mario or Sonic though. Mostly because I never had a console with those games on. But also because the design of them was too focused on getting to the right of the screen as fast as possible before a timer ran out while occasionally throwing increasingly harder obstacles at you. I prefer games where there's exploration and the game encourages it with level designs that make you go upwards as well as sideways. Screens with lots of places to go, things to pick up and bizarre enemies to avoid. I definitely want the game to feel like the player is inside a world, not just running on a never-ending treadmill of obstacles. Going left should be a thing, up and down too. Talking of movement, controls are important, specifically controls that feel responsive. I'm quite sure Manic Miner is a wonderfully challenging game once you get past the screeching title music and awful jump mechanics. And Jet Set Willy, after it's given you a free epilepsy test, has the exact kind of exploration that I like. But again, that jump mechanic, why? Jumping is such a fundamental part of a platformer, but these early games just hadn't figured it out. It's the one part of Mario that I actually do like. That fat plumber is able to leap pretty high and change direction in the air. You can cancel jumps if they aren't going well. A lot of my 8-bit gaming ended with frustration of poor controls. You'd press jump and the game would lock out your inputs until the jump had finished. 
so the games became a frustrating exercise of working out which pixel to stand on to complete the jump properly. Another aspect that I don't want to copy from these old games is the way they were inconsistent. What affects the player should affect the enemies too. The world should make sense. Why should a floor spike that I walk into or from the side kill me? It's the top bits that are pointy. Why does falling down a hole immediately kill the player? Although, I don't mind if the game itself is hard. It can even be mean and unfair. Rick Dangerous is one of my favourite games and its level design is downright hostile. It's a platformer, but also a memory test. The player should have a sense of exploration that might encourage them to map out the game. I remember taking magazines with hand-drawn maps of games and using them to navigate my way through difficult parts that I was playing. Exploration is fun. Not everything has to be a test of reactions. So where do I begin? Coding? Drawing sprites? Designing a level? No, none of that. In fact, I'm not even going to start by making this game since beyond exploration platformer, I've no idea what the game even is. It needs a setting, a character, some attempt at a plot, all those things that I'm traditionally bad at thinking up. So while I work out that stuff, I'm going to make smaller, much simpler games. Each game will be designed to be more complex than the previous. Game design by iteration and game development by practice. And since I said I'm quite capable of cloning existing games, that seems a logical place to begin. So I hope you'll come back next time when I'll be putting together bits of sprite and input code and trying to create a simple avoid the bad falling stuff, collect the good falling stuff game. And then we'll see where we go from there. So until next time, I'll see you later.